the Xenomorph XX121, possibly the most infamous and dangerous creature to ever exist across the world of the Middle Heavens region, goes by many names. These terrifying creatures of unknown origin have been named Monsters, Demons, The Bugs, The Serpent, Snatchers, X-Rays and has earned the simple title of the Alien. These creatures are the very essence and culmination of what we are facing when attempting to conquer space, a pure representation of the universe's entropic feast on everything around it. It seems no matter where humanity turns, wherever we set our feet down across the stars, the xenomorph is somewhere close, lurking, awaiting its opportune moment to wipe our species from the star maps. They seem to have only one drive, either eradicate us, or use our bodies to incubate their young. So today we will be transmitting, possibly our most vital data log. One that might be able to help the masses understand the Xenomorph XX121 as a species. The species Xenomorph XX121 is often mistakenly or simply referred to as the Xenomorph. However, this designation is confusing as the term Xenomorph is itself derived from the Greek language meaning strange form. In this sense anything not of the Earth, anything alien is technically a Xenomorph. The Xenomorph XX121 is its actual catalogue name. While this species has received several nicknames and scientific designations, most are largely inaccurate and do not reflect the creature's true nature. It has been discovered through by Dr. Blue Masolis aboard the Whalen Utani Station RB232 aka the Cold Forge that the XX121 is comprised of two separate subspecies that have evolved or been engineered together in a strange form of symbiosis, each working to, to complete different parts of the overall life cycle of the species. The first subspecies is known as Manumola noxhydria, otherwise known as its common nickname, the facehugger. And the second subspecies is the Plagiarus prepotens, colloquially known as the chest burster. Together they make Xenomorph species XX121. While talking about the mature stage of the Xenomorph, it becomes difficult to form a baseline to draw from. This is because Xenomorph morphology and biology as they mature is determined by a large number of factors including the environment they develop in and the species of host that the creature is gestated from. In saying that in today's data log, we will be using the drone as a focus point for analysis. An adult XX121 is a marvel to behold, an example of biomechanical perfection matched only by its hostility. It's not unreasonable or an understatement to refer to these creatures as living weapons. The alien possesses a thick outer layer, an exoskeleton of sorts formed from a very tough and very durable form of chitin, usually black, grey, green and brown in hue, with room for variation. This protective armor acts as a great defense against a variety of physical melee and high velocity attacks. While it's been shown on a few occasions that a direct and focused arrow or bullet can penetrate this chitinous structure, generally nothing short of a high caliber round or even pulse weaponry is needed to effectively take these beasts down. Whilst appearing quite stiff, the exoskeleton seems to have the ability to be flexed to a decent degree, allowing the creatures to move through tight and restricted spaces, that would, at first sight, appear to be far too narrow or awkward for them to fit within. But similar to a snake, they appear to be able to fold and slink their way into nearly any position. This armor also appears to give them the ability to resist large impact forces on their body. The alien can drop from high places, impact the ground with their hefty forms and not only survive, but immediately begin an assault on a victim. Below this chitin, the specific biology of the xenomorph is understudied and largely a mystery. What organs they possess, the type of tissue and cells they use is unknown to us at the project. One of the largest questions posed by the xenomorph's exoskeletal structure is how does the xx 121 see? What is its mode of sight? Many studies have been conducted on the creature in order to determine exactly how these creatures navigate the world around them. While some xeno variants have a semi-translucent dome which would suggest eyes below. The truth is that not every variant has this, some of the domes are completely solid, and would suggest that the traditional eye organs we are familiar with would not sweep the xenomorph and its biology. Some scientists have suggested thermal pits or even an eye organ that can see in much higher wavelengths of the color spectrum that are capable of seeing through their chitin domes. Researchers on Polar Station during the 2200s discovered a type of pheromone that the creature uses to identify and differentiate between friend and foe. However, this aspect of the creature remains ambiguous and understudied. The XX121's armor extends over their entire body. It forms sharp, long talons out from their feet, protruding deadly nail-like structures extending from their fingers, and travels in a ridge-like skeletal structure from the bottom posteriors of their pelvic region to create a powerful barbed-ended tail. All of these features combine to give the XX121 a lethal set of natural weapons to use against anything that might pose a threat to them or their hive. Their exoskeletons seemingly give them a great resistance to extremely harsh environments allowing them to survive in a large variety of the hostile, toxic, radioactive, and unforgiving habitats, extreme heat and cold, the vacuum of space, 
High doses of toxic and radioactive materials are all negated by the creature's powerful biological defenses as well as internal and external high effective forms of homeostasis. They have been able to achieve such feats as being submerged in molten lead and surviving its immense heat and being sucked into a vacuum and operating like normal. It's important to mention that while the vacuum of space is not an immediate death for the creatures, it's likely that given enough time, the lack of nutrients, respiratory gases and high levels of cosmic radiation that the XX121s would eventually expire. The creatures have long silverish translucent teeth theorized to at least be partly composed of metal due to their appearance and durability in not only ripping its victims to pieces but biting through metal grating among other feats. Aside from its main jaw, the XX121 has yet another smaller jaw with its own set of teeth, a pharyngeal jaw of sorts. This fleshy appendage would appear to have multiple uses. It can be used as a tongue to manipulate food within their mouths as well as a tool to rip flesh off of their victims to assist in its digestions. On top of this the inner mouth can act as a violent weapon much like the rest of the creature's biology. The inner jaw can retract and extend from the creature's main jaw at will and can rapidly fire forwards with force and speed enough to crack straight through the skull of the average human, not only breaching the very thick forehead bone of the skull but sometimes all the way through the brain and out the back of the skull. These brutal attacks are performed by the creature when the XX121 feels it has time to savor its kill, seemingly enjoying the process of holding the victim creature in front of it, staring it into its face and soul before shooting its inner jaw right through them laying them to waste. A strangely horrific and intimate experience, and a display of possibly a more sadistic side to these creatures beyond pure survival instinct, which is largely what the beasts operate on. Now, even if you do enough damage to these creatures to puncture their chitinous exoskeletal structure, you might not be happy with the end result. The species XX121 has a unique deterrent against another creature's engaging in combat with it. You could say it's the perfect defense mechanism. The XX121 has concentrated, highly acidic blood. This blood can eat through and dissolve just about anything it comes into contact with extremely rapidly. The XX121 would also seem to have a higher pressure within their circulatory system compared to the average external environment. All these facts go to create a bad situation for anything or anyone lucky enough to land a decent blow on these creatures. If you are too close to the creature but are able to puncture its chitin, then you're likely to be showered in a thick gush of acidic blood spewing out from the wound. Even a small amount of this acid landing on the wrong area can lead to devastating results. It can melt straight through your face and into your brain, onto your chest and through your vital organs and if landing on one of your joints you can basically say goodbye to that limb. At best you might get off with extremely deep wounds if only a small amount contacts you. This acidic blood is likely used not only as a defensive measure but also for respiration and in addition in their digestion to help break down their ingested foods. On the back of most XX121s there are a number of protrusions from their chitinous armor. These pipe-like spines purpose is currently little understood, but many researchers have made guesses at it. Some suggest they assist in the bipedal XX121's balance whilst walking on two feet, as the quadrupedal variants largely lack these tubes. Another theory suggests they assist with the regulation of respiration gases and or body heat. As for the creature's physical strength, this category of traits is no less terrifying when compared to the others talked about so far. XX121 have the strength far beyond that of a human. They are possibly one of the physically strongest living creatures for their size that humanity has ever encountered. They can rip both people and our equipment apart and break through almost any material using their claw-like talons combined with their acid blood, which has been seen in some cases to be expelled from the creature's mouths. As for their teeth, the primary jaw of the creature is capable of a bite strength range towards 6000 psi. It has been shown that in combination with their thick armor chitin, they can ram their bodies against thinner metal doors and bulkheads and are able to dent and eventually concave them after a barrage of successive attacks. Their limbs and digits are very versatile and powerful allowing them to easily move very rapidly over about any surface and scale walls, ceilings and leap great distances. This partnered with their colored chitinous exoskeletons means the xenomorph can easily camouflage itself in a variety of environments whilst stalking its prey. The creatures are also able to avoid showing up on thermal sensors and detection equipment, meaning they either do not radiate body heat or they can regulate it to match their environment, giving them a massive advantage against foes or prey that see in the infrared spectrum of light. If you encounter a xenomorph in the field or on your home colony, run. But even if you do, the fact that you have noticed the creature before it has seemingly attacked is usually a sign that you're already living on borrowed time. These creatures are the epitome of biological evolution. On top of their strength, their speed and agility is terrifying. They move much faster than the average human and can put Earth's fastest species to shame. 
This fact matched with their unnatural reaction times result in a creature that can chase down, engage with, and easily fend of enemies and rapidly dispatch multiple hostiles or potential victims. The average adult XX121 could easily lift and crush an adult human with little effort. The creatures have insane amounts of stamina, attacking, hunting and stalking until they capture their prey or achieve their goals. The actual lifespan of the creature itself is not something that have been able to be recorded accurately. However, reports from LV178 suggest ancient hibernating XX121s were possibly hundreds, but more likely thousands of years old, and the xenomorph eggs discovered aboard the derelict vessel discovered on LV426 were also noted to be potentially hundreds of years old. So, while it's not certain the exact life expectancy, it's been suggested that with the right conditions present, utilizing hibernation tactics, that the aliens could survive indefinitely. The XX121 is also quite intelligent, showing higher cognitive abilities such as using their acidic blood as a tool. Seen when a group of xenomorphs aboard the USM Origa attack a sole drone, and spill its blood into their containment chamber in order to escape their holding facility. On top of this, the creatures, during sieges on colonies, are able to implement battle tactics to take down an enemy force, and have even been shown to cut resources from their prey, like cutting the power to human facilities preceding an attack. In terms of their weaknesses, they don't really have any. One thing that seems to either scare or irritate them for unknown reasons is fire or flame. Most xenomorph types will retreat from it and actively avoid it if possible, as the creature can withstand a decent amount of fire damage, remaining relatively unscathed, it unclear why the creature will seek to actively retreat from it. More study is needed in this area. The life cycle of the alien is where the true horror of this species originates. Classed as an endoparasitic organism, the XX121 requires a host organism in order to reproduce. This fact means that the propagation of their species requires the downfall and suffering of another. Whilst generally being referred to as a single species, the XX121 has actually been uncovered to be comprised of two intrinsically linked symbiotic subspecies. One being the Manumola noxhydria, its role being to begin the life cycle and inseminate a host with the second half of the species, a secondary species known as Plagiarus prepotens. P prepotens bond with the host organism and hybridize itself with the host genome in a process known as the DNA reflex. This process sees a near perfect 50-50 hybridization of the shared genetic material resulting in an alien born from its host, best suited to survive within the host's native environment, possessing its advantageous biological traits, and equipped with the best tools to make more of itself with more of the host organism's species and any other unlucky enough to come across its path. As the xenomorph propagate and develop, they will begin to excrete a resin-like organic substance to form a home base of sorts, known as a hive. The alien hive structure gives the creatures a place to call home and retreat to with captured prey to use for reproduction and for sustenance. As a hive grows and develops the xenomorphs within it begin to evolve alongside it, doing so in order to fill required roles of supporting a communal force of XX121s. Stage 1 of the xenomorph life cycle is known as the overmorph. These are basically egg-like organisms that are produced by a stage 6 xenomorph or through the process of egg morphing. These overmorphs basically function as a biological housing pod for the stage 2 XX121. The overmorph's purpose is to store the stage 2 xenomorph until such a time a potential host organism enters its vicinity, where the next stage of the life cycle begins. The eggs are able to help detect a host and when one is detected, will open their forms in order to allow their contents to make a move. Stage 2, the Manumola noxhydria, colloquially known as the facehugger, has a brief life. Laying dormant within its egg until the detection of a viable host, the facehugger will launch forth and subdue this organism before quickly working to implant this creature with its dangerous internal cocktail of biomutagenic materials that will generate the third stage of the XX121. Nicknamed for its method of subjugation, the facehugger will leap from its egg after detecting a host close by quickly attaching to a viable and available orifice, after which the facehugger is able to somehow knock their host out cold while it inserts a long proboscis down the orifice and begin pumping their body with the genetic material of the plagiarist prepotens, leading to the third stage. A stage 3XX121 is the plagiarist prepotens but more crudely referred to as the chestburster. This stage takes multiple forms, starting as the mutagenic biomaterials pumped into the host by the facehugger and when contacting the host's organic tissues, begins to mutate the cells surrounding it, hybridizing it and forming a tumor-like growth. This growth will eventually grow and develop into a larva that rapidly develops to birthing size. This whole process can take a couple of days however is usually much more rapid than that, having been known to only take a few hours for a matured chestburster to develop. 
It's at this point, when the tumorous growth becomes a fully formed larva that the creature earns the title of chestburster, about to outgrow its flesh parent. The chestburster violently erupts from its host, from most examples studied, bursting through and out from the chest cavity of the host organism. The reason the larva develops here is likely due to the readily available tissue and nutrition for its rapid growth. The birthing process cracks open the sternum, if the host is human, and rips a gaping hole in the chest of the individual, allowing the creature to pull itself out and escape to a safe location, as this is the most dangerous time for the alien during its entire life cycle. In order to mature into the next stage of development, the chestburster will begin rapidly absorbing nutrients and shedding its larval skin and replacing it with a reinforced chitin armor exoskeletal structure. After this process has completed, the rapid growth period slows, and the creature has officially entered the fourth stage of its life cycle. The stage 4 xenomorph is a young adult and largely consists of few variants such as the drone, the scout and the stalkers. Each is very similar and can vary in physical appearance depending on their host. However, these xenotypes are largely responsible for being discreet, careful and calculated killers, ultimately securing a location so that they can begin to prepare for the arrival of others of its species, both through egg morphing and through the eventual development of a hive and a queen to rule it. But generally, before that occurs, we see the rise of the stage 5. A stage 5XX121 results from the stage 4 Xenos maturing and molting into matured variants of itself. Stage 4 XX121s can mature into a soldier, worker or a sentry. What they develop into is generally determined by the needs of their developing hive structure. Protectors become soldiers, defending the hive from threats. Hive builders and tenders to eggs become workers that care for the home, the unborn and eventually the queen. A stage 4 scout, being largely quadrupedal will develop into a sentry that increases its armor plating and patrols the hive ready to attack any foes that venture within. Stage 6 XX121s are truly monstrous. A soldier will eventually molt into a Praetorian, a much larger and more armored and powerful version of itself that is more resistant to damage but less agile. Sentries undergo a similar process and molt into a crusher variant that resembles a Praetorian that is quadrupedal. When a single alien in the hive demonstrates a strong intelligence and powerful psychic connection to the others in its brood, it can molt into the pinnacle of its life cycle. The matriarch of the hive, the queen xenomorph, is the only variant of the alien capable of rapidly growing and laying multiple overmorphs, rather than simply undertaking the much slower and wasteful egg morphing process. Standing at 6 meters tall, this gigantic beast is generally the result of a sole praetorian overpowering the others in its hive and securing a spot at its core, becoming the most important part of the hive and protected and attended to by the others in the brood. The queen, as hinted to before, adds an interesting layer to the hive the hive mind. This little understood powerful connection that the queen has with its subordinates allows for calculated tactics and coordinated attacks on prey and rivals to occur as well as a higher level of reasoning for the action of the hive, above that of the blind and pure rage and bloodlust of the alien as an individual. Further stages beyond stage 6 have not yet been encountered by humanity in the middle heavens, however rumors suggest an elusive and rare stage 7 exists. It's suggested a queen could continue to grow, given the right conditions, into something much larger and more powerful, creating something known as an empress or queen mother, something that would rule over multiple hives and possibly other queens. Rumors of enhanced praetorians, like palatines and a xeno king are the stuff of just that, rumors. To date, no real evidence has surfaced to support their existence. There are many subtypes of XX121 that possess their own specific traits, advantages and disadvantages. Some are just XX121s that have used non-human hosts and resulted in strange unique Xeno forms. However, others begin to drift into the separate species categories, like David 8's attempted recreation of the alien from materials found left by the engineers on Planet Paradise, resulting in the Predomorph, and then there is the Protomorph, otherwise known as the Deacon, and of course the Neomorphs. The XX121 seemingly hate these other species, and that goes for every species, even XX121 subspecies like the XX121 B types and Neomorphs. Basically, anything that isn't them is the enemy, and the enemy is dealt with using extreme prejudice. The exception to the rule is synthetics individuals. The aliens won't engage a synthetic unless provoked, and a majority of the time seem to have a curiosity about them, why this is, is uncertain but it's likely linked to the confusion posed by these creations. They look and act like hosts, but don't appear to be alive or suitable for use by the hive. The history and origins of the creature is long and complicated. As to their origins, it's a grand mystery where the xenomorph originated from. Many believe them to be an ancient or even recently developed biological weapon, possibly produced to fight a conflict long over by a race long gone. Some think the enigmatic engineers might be responsible for their creation, 
Considering that the synthetic David 8 discovered a xenomorph egg located on Paradise within the engineers' archives, but whether this was their creation or something the engineers also discovered randomly amongst the stars, like humanity did, is currently unknown. It's possible they are a naturally evolved species from a dark region of space. There are religious fanatics amongst the Middle Heavens region that suggest the alien could be of divine creation, sent here by an angry god to exact their wrath on humanity. Some theorize that they are the creation of humanity, however this has since been debunked by evidence from Paradise, and that of the seemingly ancient remains discovered on the derelict on LV-426 and within the ancient cities on LV-178. Since our first encounter with this species, the number of sighting and outbreaks across the colonies has only continued to increase in both frequency and severity. And while there are a lot of unknowns about these aliens, one thing is for certain. They are deadly, they are dangerous, and if humanity does not want to fall by the wayside, then we need to quickly put aside our differences and eradicate this menace before it consumes us. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, and Jack Fleming Jr., or like our team members, Ronchi, Ambrosia, and Carl from the War Game Bootcamp. Until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.